What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games, and today we've got a new hero pack to look at from the Marvel Champions Living Card Game. This was revealed by Fantasy Flight Games yesterday, and it all revolves around Captain America. Now, this shouldn't be huge news for you, because at Gen Con, when they revealed this game, they did show us a little release calendar, if you will. Core set's coming in October. I've done a video about that link in the description. The Green Goblin set is coming in November. I've done a video about that link in the description. So Captain America was the next one to be revealed, although it's not actually coming out until December, which is three months away. Presumably Miss Marvel, next one to be revealed. So expect this sometime in December. So I suppose if we're going to be looking at a new hero pack, we need to start off looking at the hero. And let's start off with Captain America, shall we? Because, you know, Captain America. So if we start off having a little bit of a look at the stats of Captain America, we've got Thwart of 2, which is right in line with the average. An Attack of 2, which is right in line with the average. When I say average, I mean of the five heroes in the core set. And a Defense of 2, which is right in line with the average from the core set. It is average across the board. As a side note, has the exact same stats as Black Panther, which is kind of cool. In terms of hit points, we have 11, which is right in line with the average, and weirdly, again, the same as Black Panther. And in terms of the hand size, it has a hand of 5, which is actually slightly above the average. Again, it's exactly in line with Black Panther. Having said that, the average hand size is brought down quite significantly by Iron Man, whose skill gives him more hand size, so it's not particularly fair that Iron Man's doing that. Okay, so stats-wise, it, it's Black Panther. But we've got a skill here that I like very much indeed. I can do this all day. Action! Discard one card from your hand and ready Captain America. And you can do that once per round. So you get to ready Captain America a little bit more often than you usually would. You get essentially more activations. It's a skill that we've not seen from any of the other heroes in the core set, which is nice. We don't want them repeating their skills. So this is good. This is going to help you to get a little bit more done. Yes, the stats are completely average across the board, but if you get to use the character a bit more often, that is going to kind of make the stats better, if that makes sense. And of course, where we have Captain America, we need to have Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers, in terms of stats, has a recovery of three. And that is actually lower than the average. That is down there with Tony Stark and Peter Parker as the lowest ones in the game. So that's a little bit sad. In terms of the hit points, they're the same between Hero and Alter Ego. They kind of have to be. And in terms of the hand size, it's a hand size of six. So far, every Alter Ego has had a hand size of six. I don't know if that's a hard and fast rule. They'll probably break it one day, but they haven't for the time being. But there are a couple of skills here we like very much indeed. Living Legend. Reduce the cost of the first ally played each round by one. And it says the cost of the first ally. So it's not limiting it to you no matter who plays an ally. The first one is a little bit cheaper. Obviously that only works if you're in your alter ego. So try and make sure you are when that first ally is played. It is a cooperative game at the end of the day. You should be ready for this. But it's got a really nice setup skill. Search your deck and discard pile for the Captain America shield upgrade. Add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Now this is good because Captain America's shield looks like one of the really key points about Captain America. And it probably should be, right? Captain America's, he's all about his shield. It is a one cost upgrade. And it is restricted. You can only have two cards per player. So it's not a usual free per deck. And Captain America gets plus one defense and gains Retaliate 1. Now, Retaliate 1 is the same skill that Black Panther had. Bearing in mind, Black Panther has the same stats. This is getting a bit creepy. After this character is attacked, deal one damage to the attacking character. So you boost your defense then up above average, and at that point you've got the highest defense in the game tied with Spider-Man. 
and you get Retaliate 1, which is the same skill that Black Panther has. That's nice. The problem is you really need this. Captain America becomes immeasurably better when you've got the shield, but that's all right because you start the game with the shield. That, that sounds good to me, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds like something I can get behind. So starting off here, I really like Captain America and Steve Rogers. They look like one of my favorites of the six we've seen so far. Now, I said your shield is important, and there is another card we're getting which really highlights the importance of that. It is Shield Toss. It is a zero-cost event, although you'll see in a minute it's not really a zero-cost. You discard X cards from your hand, as many as you like, and then you return Captain America's shield from play to your hand and deal four damage to X enemies. So if there are three enemies in play, you discard three cards from your hand, you return Captain America's shield from play to your hand, and then you deal four damage to X enemies. And then you're going to want to reattach it as soon as you probably can here. It's going to be fairly important. So you can even be using it as a weapon. But when you build in the boost it gives you as an upgrade and the benefit you get from shield toss with this, it's pretty important that we have it out, which is why the skill that searches for it at the beginning of the game is so big. And actually, before we move on, I do need to give a quick shout out to Shield Block, another card which was revealed on the live stream but was not actually in the article. And Shield Block just really carries on this whole shield motif. It is a zero cost event. It is an interrupt when you defend. When you would take any amount of damage, you exhaust Captain America's shield and prevent all all of that damage so not only is captain america's shield actually giving you plus one defense but you can just flat out get rid of any amount of damage as long as it's all given in one go though of course if you are going to do that you need to be prepared to exhaust captain america's shield yeah this shield does quite a lot in this game now we know that steve rogers will reduce the cost of playing your first ally and we do have an ally here in the shape of Falcon. It has a thwart of two and an attack of two. Though you do have to take one consequential damage every time you thwart or attack. You've got three hit points here. And what's kind of weird, this is exactly the same as Daredevil in terms of the stats, but not in terms of the skill. The skill here, Response. After Falcon enters play, look at the top three cards of the encounter deck. For each treachery looked at this way, remove one threat from a scheme. So it's really nice just for lowering the threat and getting your enemy further away from actually getting their scheme and you a little bit closer to actually winning the game. Now, if we're going to have heroes and allies, we're going to need a villain. And we have a minion here. We have a Captain America's nemesis minion. It is Baron Zemo. Scheme of one, attack of three health of five now he has quick strike which means he immediately attacks captain america when he enters the fray and while baron zemo is engaged with you you cannot thwart which is awkward because you win by thwarting your opponent's scheme <laughs> so um yeah that that's not ideal ladies and gentlemen so clearly baron zemo there one you're going to need to take down a little bit sooner rather than later and clearly one that's focused on attacking rather than scheming he's basically here to try and take out captain america now every hero character has their own obligation and captain america is no exception here we've got man out of time i have done a learn to play i'll link it in the description so this is the obligation that is specific to Captain America. It goes straight to the Steve Rogers player when it appears. And you may flip to alter ego form and you choose one of the following things. Exhaust Steve Rogers and then remove man out of time from the game. Remember though that Captain America's skill does allow you to discard a card from your hand and ready him. So you may be able to play around this if you're careful. Or you can discard half of the cards in your hand rounded down and discard this obligation. Now, judging from other card games, 
If you have to discard but you can't, it's fine. That's how Keyforge works. And that is also made by Fantasy Flight Games. This is something we're going to need a ruling on. But generally speaking, in card games, if you have to discard but you can't, you can basically just ignore it. Now, there are a few other cards we were shown that we need to run through fairly quickly. We've got Avengers Assemble, a four-cost event, which is extremely expensive. But you see that it can only be used once per round when you start getting a little bit excited. And it reads, Hero Action. Ready each Avenger character you control. Until the end of the phase, each Avenger character in play gets plus one thwart and plus one attack. Okay, so it's really expensive, but it's really gosh darn good. You ready each Avenger you control and give them plus one thwart and plus one attack. And between this and Captain America, you're actually getting extra readying, extra activations. You're using your characters a bit more often. That is the thing that really excites me about playing Captain America here. I like this. As a side note, which of the ones are Avengers? We've seen six heroes so far. All of them are Avengers. But only when they're in hero mode. So do try and use this when you're in hero mode. Because everyone in alter ego mode, not an Avenger. Not going to get the benefit of Avengers Assemble. You have been warned. We've also got Expert Defense. A zero cost event. Hero interrupt when you're defending. When your hero defends against an attack, it gets plus three defense for that attack. And of course, you can combine that with Captain America's shield to give yourself a frankly ridiculous defense of six. Yeah, that sounds pretty beefy to me, ladies and gentlemen. That sounds pretty beefy to me. We have Honorary Avenger, a zero cost upgrade that you can play only if your identity has the Avenger trait i.e. any of the ones we've currently seen in hero mode. You attach it to a friendly character, and the attached character gets plus one hit point, and gains the Avenger trait. Now this is important, because, and I'm assuming this is the way it works, please correct me in the comment section if you think I'm wrong, you attach it to an Avenger. Well, why does it need the Avenger trait if it's already got the Avenger trait? Because then you can flick into alter ego mode and you're still an Avenger, which means you still get the benefit of Avengers Assemble. That seems to me the way this is going to work. And there is one card that was shown on the live stream that was not actually shown in the article. It is a one cost upgrade followed. You attach it to a side scheme, maximum one per scheme. And it's a response. When the attack scheme is defeated, you deal four damage to an enemy. So it's a nice little bit of cheeky damage here to go along with shield toss. As a side note, I do not think it's a coincidence that Baron Zemo, Captain America's nemesis minion, has five health when shield toss does four damage and follow does four damage. It just stops you taking it out in one go. Now, in terms of the contents here, very quickly, it includes 15 hero cards, 17 cards from the leadership aspect, and 8 basic cards, along with Captain America's signature obligation and nemesis set, and 3 copies of one new card for each of the other aspects. Cool. I love this. This makes me extremely excited, ladies and gentlemen. This might be the hero I most want to play around with, and, and apologies to Spider-Man here, but I'm legitimately excited to start playing with Captain America. Of course, by the time this comes out, I will have had two months playing with the core set. I will be ready for a new hero, as I'm sure will most of you. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Me nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. That's where we talk about games like Marvel Champions and whatever else takes my fancy. And do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio if you want to support the channel and get some bonus pods, etc. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.